This is the worst end game ever played by two 2800s. If you're wondering why I'm calling Naka a 2800, he has been 2800 classical FIDE before, and his current blitz rating is 2879 FIDE. But what happened in this game between Carlsen as white and Nakamura as black is that both sides blundered four times in a three versus three end game, which had two main factors that are very important in these being really crucial mistakes that are quite strange. So first of all, there were theoretical elements, things that are kind of known from different uh, common end games that people would have played and also common techniques, for example, to try to draw from the white side. But the time control was 10 minutes with a five second increment and they were able to make moves within half a second because it was played online. So let's talk about the overall strategy once we get into this a little bit, but in general, basically what Nakamura is trying to do is he's trying to push his past e-pawn. And in order to do that, he may need to get his king somewhere, you know, like f4, once the white king gets pushed away. So let's talk about the ending. So Naka plays h5 right here. Now the easiest thing to do for white is to basically go, what's the opponent's idea? I've had people ask me this before. I've even had national masters ask me this. They said, well, so do you think about prophylaxis even in end games? Do you think about what the opponent's trying to do? Well, yeah, of course, if they're threatening to win, you have to try to stop them. If you're the defensive side, what is their exact threat to win? And if you're the weaker side and uh, you know, you're know you not actually reacting to their threat, well, you may lose right away. Also, if you're the stronger side and the opponent is threatening to draw by force, you have to prevent them from doing so, so you keep your winning chances. So right here, the most natural move to me is just to play h4 check, check the king away, not allow the pawn to come down to h4, and then after king f5, king f3, white keeps the pawn on d6 and everything's perfectly safe. So it wasn't a blunder. This was not a blunder yet, but it gets a little harder. So he allows h4. Now, with the backward pawn on g2, they can't go anywhere. It's a bit harder to play now. So Carlson plays king to e3. Um, rook to d4 is played, okay? And now a quite strange move was played. So I guess, Carlson may have already thought that uh, he'd be able to just give up the pawn and draw easily. The simplest thing to do would just be to go king f3 and put the burden of proof on black to try to actually prove anything. And there is no actual winning plan here, but this would have by far been the easiest. He plays rook a8, which is a bad blunder because he gives up the pawn for nothing. But the, the key thing is once rook takes d6 is played, Carlson checks and brings the rook back, trying to win the pawn, but he misses rook d4, the switch back, the rook comes right back. So rook takes d6, check, king f5, rook g4, there's rook d4 right there. So if take, 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 king f4, the king comes in and black wins. So that cannot be played, can't go into that. So Carlson, instead of taking, has to play rook to g8. And um, yeah, in the video by, by Nakamura where he discussed this a little bit, he talked about how rook d4 was what was missed. So um, Naka plays rook a4, rook h8, latching onto the h4 pawn, trying to make it harder for black to activate the rook. King g6, check, king f7. Everything all pretty normal so far. Notice how black is being quite flexible, and at this point, it seemed like black was trying to gain time on the clock because of the five second increment, gaining five seconds after every move. So it just sort of made sense to move quickly and then play f5 a little bit later. So rook h6, rook to b4, king f3. It is kind of amazing how long it took to win this end game. Rook c4, king e3. Okay, so no progress is being made yet. Naka presumably was trying to gain time so that he could, he would have more time to think and find the winning idea. So king f3, king f5. Carlson in general tried to check the king away when it was getting into any kind of aggressive position. Okay, rook h8, now f5 is played. King e3, king g5. Now it's starting to get a little bit trickier. There are prospects of, um, for example, rook to b2 being very, very strong. So rook g8 check is played, checking the king away. 
Rook F8 check, checking the king away again, check, king to D6. The funny part about this game is that as I was watching the game, I actually had the feeling, wow, we're going to see a real masterclass from Carlson in drawing this. This is going to be a, a brilliant one. But we did not see any of that. So after rook h8, the correct move here is to play rook to b2. And um, Nakamura blunders with rook e4 check. And the reason why rook e4 check is a blunder is because Carlson was able to cut off his king by moving and playing rook h6. Cutting off the king on the sixth rank does lead to a draw. Whereas if rook b2 had been played, once this pawn is captured, the connected pass pawns will win the game. So... That was, uh, that was the first blunder from Naka, blundering it back. King f3, rook c4, rook h6. And when I saw this, I basically said, wow, okay, Carlson's got it all figured out. We have the draw right here. Great job. He's, he's cut off the king. Um, now, as long as there's no real problem with g2. So, I mean, the goal for black is to try to push the e-pawn forward. And the goal for white is just hold g2 and you'll be totally fine. So... In this position, king f7 was played, and now another blunder is played of king to e3, moving too far away from the pawn because this allows rook to c2 to be played, and here's the problem. If king f3, now there's check. Whoops, here, check, and if the king comes forward, suddenly there's e3 and it's game over. So had, had Carlson simply waited and played king f2, it, it would have only been a draw. So... That was quite strange because you have this feeling you're watching an endgame masterclass, but really they, there were a lot of good moves played and then some incredibly bad blunders where it was blundered back and forth, which was quite crazy. So rook c2 was the winning move, as I mentioned, hitting g2. But now king g7 was played, which blunders away from a win right back to a draw. So rook e6, and this is key. So as the defensive side, notice what Carlson's trying to do. He's trying to hit pawns and make it very, very hard for black to make any progress. So rook c3 check, hitting the rook. The rook comes back to defend the e5 pawn. And now the important thing, the important thing is that you don't get cut off. You want to make sure you can hold g2 so you can save the game. So the correct idea is just to go king to e1. If you go king e1, here you'll be totally fine. For example, like let's say I play rook a6. Notice the king is cut off along the 6th rank, so the king can't come forward. Rook c2, king f1. Let's say I just play like this. This is the perfect defensive idea, because notice what we're doing. We're perfectly covering the 4th rank, hitting f4 and hitting h4. And in this case, black will not be able to make progress. So for example, king g1, everything's safe. So make sure that you don't lose g2 in this kind of a position. And now the problem is, after king e3, which was a blunder, black can play king f7, and this takes the pressure off of the e-pawn, allowing the rook to become active again. So after rook h6, we go right back to what we saw before of rook c2. Here, check, check, and this wins for black. So now you might be thinking to yourself, well, are you being too harsh? Would you say this about your own play? Absolutely, I would. And to take it another step forward, if this was even a five, let's say a five minute with a two second increment game, and it was a money prize game, and I blundered four times, let's say with white, when I had an easy draw in all cases, without any complicated or difficult moves, I'd be really disappointed, and I'd go, yeah, I should have uh, defended much, much better. So. If I had been playing a time control more than twice as fast as this time control, I would have been very disappointed with myself. So, you know, you have to be critical of your mistakes, especially if they're clear ones that you can learn from and you, you know how to avoid. So let's go back. Um, rook a5 was played, so he gives him an opportunity. The king comes back over. King to f3. Uh, rook a3 check. King f2. e4. Okay, so the pawn moves forward. Fine, fine. Notice that Carlson's doing totally fine. He's got the king cut off, so he goes rook to b6. And there is another important concept here. He wants the mac maximum checking distance so that he can you know, check black's king if he ever needs to. And it's just good to be the maximum distance away from the king. He can later go back to e6 to kind of come back and attack the f5 pawn from e5. So check. Naka tries to make progress. 
King F1, E3, Rook E6, all basically perfect. Check, King to G1, F4. Okay, so everything is everything was done perfectly. Now, what's the easiest way to draw this? The easiest way to draw this is to just simply latch on to the pawn because this ties them down completely. And now, well, also one other thing is that if they end up moving the rook away, um, I can just go right back with king f1, and then I would be threatening to take the pawn. So after king f6, I can basically just slide along the e-file. You can just slide up and down the e-file, go, go rook e8, rook e4, if the king ever attacks it. So here I can just go rook e7. I have room to maneuver. So here, now, one very important thing is I want to make sure I don't get I, I don't get checked into no man's land over here. So we play the we play the only move king f1 check king g1 and here we have a draw. So the right idea the king guards g2 the rook is effective on the e file and targets f4 and kind of prevents the e pawn from advancing. This would basically be the perfect strategy. The king is being efficient and the rook is very active. It's and you know, it's it's perfectly defending from behind. But he plays rook a6, and this is a very bad move because now there's king f7. Very nice move by Naka. And the really curious part about this game is at times you felt like Naka was doing something really brilliant, but then suddenly uh, fails to actually win this. So uh, rook to b6, rook a2. Now... Black's eventually preparing, well, now there's an immediate threat of check and push. So he goes back with rook to b1, but this allows the king forward. The king's no longer cut off. Now, the funny thing about this example in this game is that if this had been drawn, well, Carlson won the match 1-0 and won $30,000. So uh, the four blunders by Naka here basically were $30,000 blunders and uh, the three blunders by, or four, sorry, four blunders by Carlson could have also been $30,000 blunders. Well, not quite that much, but you know, 20,000 or whatever, which is a huge amount of money for a single blunder in an end game that doesn't really have a complicated defensive idea. So he prepares to bring the king in. Once the king, once the king comes in, it, it should be all over. It should be very easy. So he goes king e5, um, rook to b8, check. Now f3 comes in. There we go. Um, take, take. Now the black king has plenty of maneuverability. Um, h3 is a big problem. Notice once again, remember previously Carlson had Naka's king cut off on the sixth rank. Here white's king is cut off on the f file. So uh, king g2, rook f2 check, king g1, I thought perhaps the simplest idea was to go king e4, and now if you check and you try to win the pawn, take, rook g2 check, here, check, and there we go. We will be queening, and it is game over. So um, he plays rook f7. Rook f7 was perfectly good. Notice the king is completely cut off here, and this is why black's king is able to just run right up and win easily. Rook to b2, um, king to e4. King g2. There are a couple of easy moves here. I actually thought rook d7 is a very easy move here because I'm threatening rook d2 check. Just game over right there. Um, he plays king d3. Perfectly good. So perfectly good play by Naka. Check. King to d2. Now remember what I talked about before. Checking distance. The defensive side wants to have maximum checking distance so that they can keep harassing the king and not allow the king to come close. So rook to b2 check is played... And now the way to win is to go simply king to d1. This is a clearly winning idea. Um, and then, you know, you just threaten to push the pawn forward and you win easily. But curiously, king c3 was played, a terrible blunder. And now the rook will have checking distance. So the whole idea failed. And this was actually quite interesting, the, the drawing setup that Carlson was able to get here. So... Uh, king f1, rook to g3, rook a4, okay, latching onto the pawn here, king d3. Well, now we need to check the king away. So checks the king away, king e4, and now he goes rook a8 for maximum checking distance. So once again, the concept was crucial here. 
And now we can just keep checking the king. The king has nowhere good to hide, so he checks the king. Rook f8 check, um, king g5, rook g8 check, king f5, rook f8 check, king e5, rook e8 check, king d4, rook d8 check, king to c4. And now, actually, perfect thing to do here, you latch on to the pawn, and then you can later use your rook to latch on to this pawn, and neither pawn can advance forward. So he simply goes rook h8, h3, check, king d5. And the only thing you have to watch out for is to just not allow um, black to, let's say, play king d4 and then check the white king away. So if the black king is defending the pawn, you have, you have to check it away. But as long as you keep that in mind, it's, it is an easy draw. So king f5, rook h8, uh, king f6, rook h6 check. He has many, many ways to hold this. Rook h8, maximum checking distance. <laughs> rook h6 check. King e7, rook h8, king f7, rook h7 check. King g8, rook h6. A lot of moves here. Uh, almost feels like one of those computer games where they just keep shuffling. But uh, actually, if this was a TCEC kind of computer world championship game, they would have agreed the draw here. Uh, after too many 0.00s consecutively. Okay, so check the king away. King c3, check. Notice there's no good place to hide. So uh, checks the king way over there, goes right back. Great example of latching onto, latching onto pawns as the defender to make it so that the stronger side isn't able to do anything. But um, yeah, what a strange feeling looking over this game and uh, seeing so many blunders and none of them were particularly crazy or difficult. It was really just that if, if Carlson could have made sure he didn't lose G2, he would have had an easy draw. Um, and then Naka had a way to win G2 and win the game, but did not do so. And, and then finally Naka was winning. He got his king up. That was the whole goal of everything. Got his king all the way up, and then uh, he ran backwards and uh, allowed checking distance, maximum checking distance for Carlson to just kind of check his way to a draw because the, the pawn couldn't be pushed. And then by latching onto both pawns, it was a draw. So tons of different instructive rook end game techniques, but pretty unbelievable. Um, oops. The final move by Naka was king f7 and then rook h7 check. I believe this is the worst endgame you will ever see by two 2800s in your whole life. Crazy. Crazy.